Hello everyone. Once a teacher asked a little pupils to share their acts of kindness to animals and birds. One said, Miss, one time I helped a kitten climb out of a pit. Another said, Miss, once I tended an injured baby bird in our garden. After several of the children had told their stories of kindness, finally one little boy said, Miss, this morning I hit a boy with a stick for kicking my dog. Friends, today's gospel story is one of the most difficult stories in the Bible to understand. The story is about a manager or a steward of a rich man who would soon be terminated from his job for misusing his master's property. As soon as he learned of his master's intention to relieve him of his responsibilities, he took stock of himself. Realizing that he was too old to work in fields and too proud to depend on others for his own maintenance, and looking to the future, he devised a plan to save himself and immediately put it into action. He called his master's debtors one by one and sought to make friends with them by reducing their debts, although it was despicably dishonest. In doing so, the unfaithful steward hoped to find favor with the debtors by making them obligated to him so that they would return the favor by providing him with a place to stay while he was unemployed. However, he put his master in a difficult position. If the master had later demanded full payment from the debtors, he would have incurred the anger and ill will of the people. So the master, instead of punishing his dishonest manager, surprisingly commended him for his shrewdness. Friends, the story, like the story of the prodigal son, is left open-ended, leaving us to wonder if the steward was reinstated after he had been commended for shrewdness. Friends, as always, Jesus used this parable to teach his disciples not just a moral lesson, but also a spiritual one. He said, for the children of this world are more prudent in dealing with their own generation than the children of light. Friends, Jesus drew a contrast between the children of the world, referring to unbelievers and those in darkness of sin, and the children of light, referring to believers and those in the light of Christ. Here, Jesus was talking about the wealthy and powerful Pharisees the scribes and others who had been charged with managing property, which in fact belongs to God alone. But like the steward in the parable, they were squandering God's property or putting heavy burdens upon poor people and exploiting others to meet their own needs and desires. Then Jesus said, I tell you, make friends for yourselves with the dishonest wealth, so that when it fails, you will be welcomed into eternal dwellings. Friends, it appears that since Jesus praised the steward for being dishonest, he was encouraging his followers to take the dishonest manager as a good example. and become deceitful when it comes to dealing with others or in using wealth to make friends. No, Jesus was not condoning the improper actions of the steward, but rather he pointed out the steward's worldly shrewdness to win friends using his master's money so he would not be homeless when he lost his job. Jesus wanted his followers to adopt the same shrewdness not to frantically hold on to earthly wealth and possessions, which soon will disappear, but instead give them away, especially to those in need, so that they could inherit their eternal home as a gift from God by the way they live their life on earth. Friends, 
Jesus then said that if a person is trustworthy in very small matters, he will also be trustworthy in very great ones. Similarly, if a person is dishonest in small matters, he will also be dishonest in great ones. If the person can't be careful with the earthly wealth, which is not even his or hers to begin with, then he or she cannot be entrusted with true wealth. Here true wealth refers to the responsibility in God's kingdom along with all the company heavenly rewards. Then Jesus said that like the servant who cannot serve two masters at the same time, for he might be divided over his affections and obedience, and he would fail altogether in his duty to either one or the other. Jesus warned his followers that they cannot serve both God and Mammon. They cannot love money and love God at the same time. Friends, the gospel message is the same today as it was in Jesus' day. Jesus has called us out of darkness to light and made us children of light. And he wants us to walk in the light till the end. Hence, it is important we first and foremost gratefully acknowledge that all of creation, all money, all wealth, all things and all resources ultimately belong to God. And we are mere stewards of what he entrusts us with. Second, we should strive to be a good, prudent, honest and responsible steward. That is to say, we should strive to earn our living in honest ways and always utilize it for ourselves and others to gain heaven. If in, in, in some way, like the children of the world, acquire wealth in a dishonest way, we should still freely share our unrighteous wealth with others on earth and make friends who are really worth having. Amen. God bless you.